Welcome to Sustainable Packaging with Corey Connors. Today's guest is part of a really cool packaging company called Sunoco. She is Cassandra Snelling, and she is the marketing manager and global sustainability. How are you, Cassandra? I'm doing well, Corey. How are you? Good. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I'm excited to tell everybody about some of the products that you guys make, but can you tell us a little bit about your, your background? How did you get into packaging? Yeah. So, you know, it's kind of a funny story. So I graduated from college in 2012 with a degree in English and a minor in sociology and uh, a <laughs> perfect transition to packaging, right? <laughs> such a natural transition. So, you know, I didn't want to teach. I didn't want to do the things that you would normally do with those kinds of degrees. Yep. And luck had it. One of my college classmates was leaving a Barry actually. Oh, and yeah and gave me a recommendation. And so I was lucky enough to be hired on as a a sales associate at Barry, or well, really, I actually started as a a sales coordinator. So helped the the inside sales team and grew in their sales organization. And from there, just, you know, maintained a love of of packaging. That's excellent. And I have never heard anybody as of all the people I've interviewed, I think you're my 73rd interview, no one has said, oh, I wanted to go into packaging from when I was a kid. (laughs) (laughs) So it's always, I fell into it. I knew a person or yeah. So, but then when people come into packaging, they don't leave. So there must be something nice about it. Yeah. I mean, I think it's been great and obviously you like it too. So (laughs) (laughs) a couple of years under my belt. Yeah. So tell us about Sunoco. What is, what do you do? What are you known for a big packaging company? Yeah. So at Sunoco, we're a large global company. So we're in um, about 34 countries, I believe. And our net worth is about $5.6 billion and really have a focus area in, in just about every packaging format. So historically, you know, our iconic package has been our paper container, but we also work in flexibles, in plastic trays, clamshells, the healthcare industry, where we're providing, you know, tools for things such as, you know, the coronavirus shot and things like that. That's amazing. So a little bit of everything. And and then most recently we completed our acquisition of the ball metal pack, uh, a part of that group. So we acquired the aerosol cans and a few other things. Oh, that's really interesting. I didn't know that they split that off. That's really cool. Yeah. So we're excited. That's, uh, that's been a very popular option for packaging. The aluminum is really taken off the last couple of years, especially. Have you worked on any of those projects? So a few. So I've certainly had my hands busy with our paper container. So we have yeah. our EnviroCan packaging and, you know, that's got such a cool story. So we have our EnviroCan and we have both a metal end. And then in Europe, we have our paper bottom and we're working on launching that paper bottom in the U S Oh wow! But yeah, but it's such an exciting packaging option. So what our group found is that, you know, that package can be recycled successfully today in the steel stream, at least the ones oh, with wow. the metal ends. And it takes no upgrades from recycling centers or MRFs. So as long as they have a magnet, that magnet will detect the metal in the can. It can be sorted successfully into the seal stream processed and uh, those non-steel components. So the paper parts of the can, those can emit a little bit of energy in that incineration process. So there's an added benefit there. That's great. Yeah. And then used to make a new steel components. And so, you know, that's one avenue. And then we even went a step further and started doing testing in the paper stream. Wow. And so what we found is that those metal components can be separated out and through the pulping process Mm -hmm. and the paper components can be used to make new sheet. And then the non-fiber paper components are separated and we can send those through to recyclers as well to follow that same sortation process. Wow, that's really cool. So the EnviroCan is a paper tube with high graphic print on the outside, but craft on the inside. And then it has either a metal or a paper bottom. That's, that's correct, right? 
That's the bulk of it. And yeah. then depending on, <laughs> yeah, that's the bulk right. of it. And then depending on the fill, uh, the fill product, the internal components can be adjusted. So, you know, for example, if it's a coffee package, we know that coffee is super sensitive. And so, you know, it might need a metallized layer on the inside to ensure that quality um, and things like that. So we can adjust the lining needs, but yeah, it's a great, it's a great, uh, great sustainable option. And again, you've got two recycling streams that you could enter into with that package. Which as far as I know, are the two most common streams for recycling and the easiest for MRFs to pull out either with, like you said, the magnet or go to the paper stream. That's great. Really cool. We'll have to spread the word about the the Enviro can out there. Excellent. Oh yeah, please do. That would um, make our, that would make our business development up so excited. So we were, once we discovered that these two streams were successful and we always had a feeling, we always kind of knew it could be, you know, recycled. It's just historically it's been, you know, how it is. If it's a mixed product, it gets a little, we have some hesitation, right? Right. And, and even at the consumer end, we get confused, right? It's like, where do we put this item? Mm -hmm. And so we actually hired a business development rep to start doing Murph outreach. And we created a sales kit for not just them, but also for the municipalities. So once the municipalities um, say, Hey, yeah, we're going to take this. We have a B to C kit so that they can start immediately marketing to their communities as well. That is the key to this whole thing. In my opinion, education, we have to tell everyone, everyone I'm talking about manufacturers, customers, end users, MRFs, recyclers, all the whole chain needs to know what to do with what. And if, if until we get to that point where everyone knows, okay, this goes in that bin, this goes in that bin, or this can be recycled or this shouldn't be recycled until we get to there, we're, we're not done yet. And I think we've got a long ways to go, but it sounds like what you're doing is a huge improvement. Well done. Yeah. Thank you. It's at least a step, right? And we've got a lot of work to do, like you said, but it's a start for sure. What do you think consumers need to know as far as packaging goes to improve with recycling capabilities? Yeah, gosh. You know, I think the first step is just even learning what your municipality will take. So I think sometimes that can be a struggle because it varies as you know, not just from state to state, but from county to county, there's such a variable there. And, you know, I think that that's really the first step. And then I think the second step is, you know, don't be afraid. Don't feel like your, your cleanup process has to be perfect. Right. So like, for example, in paper mills, they can accept a bit of residue, you know, it doesn't have to be perfectly spotless clean. Certainly we don't want a lot of stuff in there, but you know, it doesn't have to be time consuming and you don't have to feel bogged down to start your recycling journey. So I think the first is figuring out what is accepted. And then the next is just do your best, just rinse it out, get it in the bin and do your best. (laughs) I agree. Westmark just did a study last year, two years ago, that even grease and cheese, believe it or not, in pizza boxes will not affect the quality of the recycled paper. So recycle your pizza boxes. Put them in the put them in their bin. We need the corrugated. OCC is at uh, an all time high in value. Uh, we need that old corrugated container. So please keep recycling. <laughs> so valuable. What what do you have coming up that's exciting for you and your company? Anything new going on? Oh gosh, we have a lot coming up. So the first thing that's been top of mind recently, and we just finished filming our our first episode this week, is we are going to be launching a sustainability myth busting series. Oh, cool. Yeah. So that'll be the first episode will launch May 4th, a good science day, right? May the 4th be with us, <laughs> but you know, we're really excited about it. So again, going back to that education at multiple levels, we hope that this will be a way for, you know, sure folks in the industry to have fun, right. And, and see those myths that we know are myths debunked, but hopefully it'll also resonate with the end users out there and get them excited and, and help fill them in on, on packaging, because I think there's so many any misconceptions. I mean, even if we look at, at plastic, for example, you know, I was just at the, the natural, uh, foods expo, uh, West and, you know, a lot of folks 
had a lot to say about plastic and uh, they would say, well, we'll just pivot to, you know, a paper container option or, or this option. And it's like, well, you know, that there's plastic in that, right. You know, you know, that it takes plastic to still make that package work. And so I, I think it'll be an exciting program. So we've got that coming up. And then, you know, we have some exciting other things socially coming up. So we have our Earth Day event. So we're going to be doing a big corporate Earth Day cleanup event. So that'll be really nice. And and then we're also going to get to start talking a little bit more about one of our other great programs. We're going to highlight that during a National Tree Day, which I believe is May 16th. But we have a product called Eco Reel. And that is a wooden reel that's used for fiber optic cables. And there's a really cool program around eco reel. So at Sunoco, we, you know, sell these wooden reels and we allow our customers to return those. And, and all they have to do is call us. We will send a truck to pick it up. We hire someone who breaks down these wooden reels so that we can really maximize that truckload. We get them brought back. We refurbish them, put them back together and resell them. And in doing that over five years now, we've saved about 300,000 trees, I believe was the count. So again, another really good program that we have just, you know, kind of trying to do the best we can and partner with our customers and make the world a little bit greener. (laughs) That's excellent. Are you going to star in the Mythbuster episodes? I will be in the first one. (laughs) I will be in the first one, but you know, I'm really excited to, to shed and share a spotlight on the great work that the folks around us are doing. So from our project managers, our engineers, and um, not just U.S., but all over the world. So, you know, the first one, we've got some U.S. folks, but for the ones planned a little later on, we'll have some folks from Europe and China, which is going to be really exciting. And, And talking about a little bit of everything, we'll touch on LCAs and how those can be used to, you know, pick your package and how you know, designing for sustainability really isn't too hard. It's just choosing the right package for your product and touching base on some of those recycling myths. So yeah, we hope it, we hope it'll be a fun program for everyone. So other than the aluminum uh, cans that you, for the aerosol division and the Enviro can and thermoforms, do you guys have other capabilities as well? Oh my goodness. Absolutely. <laughs> tell, us, tell us some of the highlights. I looked at your website <laughs> and I was overwhelmed. I was, wow. Impressive. Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot. So we have, you know, a molded fiber bowl. So that's pretty exciting. Oh, wow. That's our Natrellis option. And so that's made out of sugar cane and is recyclable. And then we have a compostability pending on that. So we're working on that certification. Certainly we have our thermoforming side with our trays and clamshells. We have our reusable businesses, such as our wooden and and plastic reels. And then we've also got a cool package called the paper blister. I don't know if you maybe came across that. I haven't seen that one. What's that about? So it is um, a great way to kind of take the mixed substrate formats out of retail packaging. So for example, when you look at, you know, a pin pack today, you have the paperboard back and the plastic front. And so what we've done is we've made a full paper version of that. So it can have a window. Now that window would just be a window that you could touch through, you know, so it would have to be for things like pins or, uh, you know, more common good items, but, you know, takes the, the plastic out just to, again, make it easier to recycle and easier for the user. And then another benefit is you get a little bit of a fuller billboard as well, because you've got more printable surface area. And then with that, they were also able to use a water-based technology that allows for a decrease in the VOCs that are released, which is pretty exciting too. So that that's amazing. And I've heard the, the term VOCs used in clean room technology often. Can you explain to the listeners what VOC stands for? Great question. (laughs) I don't know that I am the best to explain that, but I would love to get your take on it. Oh, she sends it back. (laughs) Yeah. So my understanding is it's variable off-gassing compounds. And basically the way it was explained to me is when you buy a new car, it smells like a new car. And those smells are the plastic off-gassing in your vehicle. So 
as much as you might like those smells, you might want to roll down the windows for a few days and let those dissipate. Uh, <laughs> they're not going to hurt you, but they're not the healthiest things to be breathing in for a long time. But it's something that we all need to be aware of. That, that new car smell is maybe not the most healthy thing for our bodies. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So thank you. That's how yeah. I understand it too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's important that we, anytime somebody throws an, an, ac an acronym, I, I always define it because you, people that are, you know, high school students all the way up to PhDs in packaging are listening to this podcast. And I want to make sure everybody's on an even playing field. Absolutely. But yes, yeah, so absolutely those volatile organic compounds and just, so yeah, it's, it's exciting that we get to decrease that a bit for sure. Well, that's excellent. So what's the best way for people to get in touch with you and Sunoco? Yeah, so certainly LinkedIn is great. So you can look me up at Cassandra Snelling um, on LinkedIn. And then you can also reach out to us at sunoco.sustainability at sunoco.com. That's a long email. So I'm going to write that down. Sunoco at or dot sustainability yes at sunoco.com at sunoco.com would you believe that sustainability at sunoco.com was already taken would you <laughs> i would it's uh it's amazing and why would somebody have that right why would they use that <laughs> website fascinating well i'd like to thank landsberg aurora for sponsoring this podcast i really appreciate that and i'd like to thank all the listeners for listening if you are listening please subscribe so you don't miss any of the great episodes and give us a review if you have time we always appreciate that thank you so much cassandra thank you